You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group Coaching Class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, July 17th, 2018. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story today is from investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Tuesday. First thing to know is Netflix is slammed after missing big on subscriber growth. Netflix missed its subscriber growth projections for the first time in five quarters raising fears that the streaming giant's rapid expansion is slowing. The company, one of the momentum leaders of this bull market, reported second quarter earnings after the market closed on Monday. In addition to a slight miss on revenue compared to estimates, Netflix posted a huge miss on subscriber additions. The company added 5.2 million subscribers from April through June. That's about 1 million less than forecast. Uh, The second thing to know is Goldman Sachs continues a busy week of earnings. Goldman Sachs results are due before the opening bell and they will be today's main event as a busy week for earnings rolls along. Goldman's results will be of particular interest to investors amid reports that David Solomon, currently the firm's president, would be named CEO, succeeding Lloyd Blankfein who has held the top role at Goldman since 2006. In addition to Goldman, Johnson & Johnson, United Healthcare, and Progressive are all scheduled to report Tuesday morning. Fed's Powell to address Congress. Federal Reserve Chair Jeremy Powell is set to deliver his semi-annual monetary policy testimony on the economy before the Senate Banking Committee uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern Time text of the testimony will be released 90 minutes before he starts speaking. Investors are hoping to get a better idea of what the Fed's thoughts are on current disputes over trade, including whether any alarm on their part could put interest rates increases on hold until the trade situation calms down. Fourth thing to know today is Wall Street points to a subdued open. U.S. stock futures pointed to a subdued open as investors await further corporate results and remarks by Federal Reserve Chair Jeremy Powell. Uh, the fifth thing to know today is oil prices stabilize after sharp falls. Oil prices were relatively flat, pausing for breath after tumbling to three month lows as supply disruptions disruptions in Libya began to ease and reports of potential exemptions from U.S. sanctions for buyers of Iranian crude began to emerge. U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI crude was down 7 cents or 0.1 percent at $67 a barrel. It fell 4.2 percent on Monday. Brent crude futures were down 22 cents or 0.3 percent at $71.62 a barrel they sank 4.6% in the prior session. Our second story today is from MarketWatch.com. Walmart and Microsoft deepen their partnership to take on Amazon. Walmart agreed to use Microsoft's cloud technology to power functions 
that could include algorithms for purchasing and sales data sharing with vendors, the two companies said, deepening a partnership between two of Amazon.com's most powerful rivals. The five-year deal to be announced Tuesday pairs Amazon's largest retail competitor with its closest challenger in iCloud computing, or in cloud computing, rather. Uh, Walmart has warmed recently working with technology companies as it fends off Amazon's retail ambitions and expertise in data. Our third story today is from Mondovisione.com. CME Group achieves international average daily volume of 4.2 million contracts in the second quarter of 2018. That's up 13% from the second quarter of 2017. CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse derivatives marketplace today, announced that it achieved quarterly international, defined as outside the U.S., average daily volume of 4.2 million contracts during the second quarter of 2018 up 13% over the same period last year. Europe, Middle East, and Africa quarterly average daily volume hit close to 3.3 million contracts in the second quarter of 2018, up 9% from the second quarter of 2017. This was driven largely by strong performance in the commodities product suite, with metals volume up 38% and agricultural commodities up 12%. Our fourth story today is from CNBC.com. Japan and EU sign a trade deal to eliminate nearly all tariffs. The European Union and Japan signed a landmark deal on Tuesday that will eliminate nearly all tariffs on products they trade. The ambitious pact signed in Tokyo runs counter to President Donald Trump's moves to hike tariffs on imports from many U.S. trading partners. It covers a third of the global economy and markets of more than 600 million people. The EU and Japan showed an undeterred determination to lead the world as flag bearers for free trade, Abe said in a joint news conference with European Council President Donald Tusk and European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. Tusk praised the deal as the largest bilateral trade deal ever. He said the partnership is being strengthened in various other areas, including defense, climate change, and human exchange, and is sending a clear message against protectionism. The leaders did not mention Trump by name, but they did little to mask what was on their minds, highlighting how Europe and Japan have been pushed closer by Trump's actions. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for July 17, 2018. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Options News Rundown. To learn more about these stories or any other developments from the world of options, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by MarketTaker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of MarketTaker Mentoring's live Advantage Group Coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 